Johnny May here and welcome to this week's quick tip where I'm going to teach you the most important exercise that you should be practicing every day if you want to learn jazz piano. Now when it comes to learning jazz piano, there are a lot of things that you can practice. For example, you could practice learning new tunes from a book like this, you could work on your jazz piano technique, or you could practice improvising piano solos. And while all three of these are very important skills, if I had to pick one that's the most important, it's being able to pull open a book like this and play any jazz tune. So what's the best exercise to help you be able to play any jazz tune? Well, that's what I'm going to tell you in today's quick tip. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so what is the most important jazz exercise that will actually help you learn almost any jazz tune you'll find in a fake book? It's called the diatonic seventh chord exercise. Okay, and it's actually incredibly simple. I'm going to first show you the chords. I'm going to kind of explain why they're important to know, and then I'm going to teach you the exercise at the end of the quick tip. So basically, diatonic seventh chords are all the seventh chords that come from a major scale. Okay, so if you took your C major scale, it's all white notes, and you built seventh chords on each note from the scale. So if I did this on the C, and I skip a note, play the E, skip a note, play the G, and skip a note, and play the B, I have what's called a C major seven chord. Okay, and then you can do this on the next note from the scale. So if I do this on the D, I have what's called a D minor seven chord or a two chord in the key of C because it's based on the second note, one, two of the C major scale. Okay, and if you do this all the way up the piano, you have an E minor seven chord, it's called the three chord, and then the four chord is called F major seven, and then this chord is the five chord, it's called G seven, and then this one here is the six chord, it's called A minor seven, and then this last chord here, the seven chord is called B half diminished seven. Now, don't worry too much about the names. If the names are new to you, don't worry. They will make more sense over time and as you get more exposed to these chords. So these are basically your diatonic seventh chords. And here's the really cool thing is that when you open up a jazz tune like Autumn Leaves, most of the chords in the tune actually use one of these seven diatonic chords. Okay, so for example, we start the melody in the key of A minor, and then we're on a D minor seven chord, that's the two chord in C. Now this is a five chord in C, this is that G seven, and then a C major seven, it's a one chord. And then an F major seven is a four chord. And then it goes to a B minor seven flat five, or B half diminished. And then there's one chord exception called the E seven. It's just a little altered version of the E minor seven that I taught you earlier. It's called a secondary dominant and it kind of helps you get to a new chord. And then we end on A minor, okay? So if you look at this entire chord progression, it's basically using all diatonic chords from the key of C major. And you'll find this in most jazz tunes. You see lots of different seventh chords, but they're all diatonic chords from one key. Another really good ex example here is Fly Me to the Moon. Right, really cool song, very popular song, but if you actually look at the chords from the tune, it starts on an A minor seven, that's a six chord in C. And then a two chord in C, that's a D minor seven, and then a five chord, and then a one chord, right? These are all diatonic chords from the key of C major. And then it continues, F major seven, and then B minor seven, flat five, or B half diminished seven, and then we have this altered E chord, altering from the E minor seven to what we call a secondary dominant chord. And then we're back to A minor seven. So once again, Fly Me to the Moon, very common jazz standard, uses all diatonic chords from the key of C major. Here's another example. Look at Misty, beautiful melody. really lovely chords. Now at first glance you might see these chords and you might think, okay Johnny, it looks like we're in the key of C major. I've got a C major seven chord, that's a one chord, but then it switches to a G minor seven. 
that's not in the key of C major. Well, guess what? If you look at this chord progression, G minor seven, C seven, to F major seven, these are diatonic chords from the key of F. So what we're doing is we're temporarily in a different key. In this case, we momentarily go to the key of F with what's called a two, five, one in the key of F major. A lot of musicians will refer to the, these as borrowed chords. And so you do this in jazz. Sometimes you leave a key. In this case, you go to the key of F major and you end up using diatonic chords from F major. And just as a quick review, your diatonic chords from F major, if you played all seventh chords, you'd play them like this, all right? And so you'll quickly see, oh, hey, Johnny, that makes sense. This is just a two chord in the key of F. And then if you look at the next phrase, you know, this F minor seven chord in the tune, and then B flat seven chord, guess what? These are simply diatonic chords from the key of E flat major, okay? This is a two chord and then a five chord, all right? And you can actually practice these. If you start on your E flat major seven chord, you can do all of your diatonic seventh chords up the E flat major scale. Now, before I move on and teach you the exercise that I recommend practicing for your diatonic seventh chords, if you are enjoying this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. All right, you ready to learn the most important exercise that I think you should be practicing every day? I actually wanna play it for you and then I'll break down what I'm doing. It's not only an incredible exercise because it helps you learn your diatonic seventh chords in a key, but it also will help you with soloing in the right hand. So here's basically what I'm doing. I'm taking all of my diatonic seventh chords, and basically what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the chord in my left hand, and then I arpeggiate it in the right hand. And then D minor, I'm just arpeggiating it, okay? Now, it's not as simple as that. I'm doing a very specific rhythm that's very common when you're improvising jazz, and it goes like this. Okay, basically, I'm grabbing the chord, one and two and, I grab the D on this B, and then I go three and four and. Okay, you really wanna get this rhythm if you want to not only understand these chords, but also start getting comfortable with some improvisation. I'll do it once a little slower. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And again, the rhythm there on the E, one and two and, and then three, four. Okay, and you're gonna do this all the way up the piano. One and two and three, four, and then on the B, one, two, and three, four. Does that make sense? So we're coming in a little early on the left hand chords, right? It kind of creates a nice syncopated type of sound. And then you can do this coming down from the C. So one, two, that's together, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, one, Two, three, four, one, two, three. And notice on the first chord, I like to make it short, you know, ba, ba, okay? Really, really helpful to practice, okay? Now, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna practice this with a backing track. Uh, this lesson does come with three different backing tracks at different tempos that you can practice with. So let's go ahead and try playing with the slowest backing track at 100 BPM. Here it is. Here we go. And down. All right. By the way, these three backing tracks are downloadable as well as the lesson sheet music you're seeing up here on the top left of the screen at pianowithjohnny.com. You can also change the key of this entire sheet music with the click of one button and practice it in all 12 keys with our smart sheet music. So I'll put a link to all of that below.
Now, once you've played this exercise in the key of C, I recommend that you play it in some other keys because not all jazz music is written in the key of C. So what I recommend that you do is after you do the key of C is to go down fifth intervals and practice each new key. So if you go down a fifth interval from C, one, two, three, four, five, you have F. So practice all of your diatonic seventh chords in the key of F major. Okay? And remember, with diatonic seventh chords, all you're doing is taking the notes from the scale and skipping every other note. So if you know your F major scale, then you can figure out all of your diatonic seventh chords. There's the F major, all right? And so what I recommend you do is you work counterclockwise around the circle of fifths through all of your keys. So once you do the key of F, then do the key of B flat, and then after B flat, do the key of E flat. And the reason I have you practicing these flat keys is because these are more common keys when you're playing jazz music. Now, if you'd like some guidance to practice these chords in all 12 keys, I recommend that you check out our Diatonic 7th Exercises course over at pianowithjohnny.com. I teach you 48 different exercises that you can use to master these in all 12 keys, so I'll put a link to that below. All right, before we end the lesson, let's go ahead and play our same exercise. This time, we're gonna play it a little bit faster at 130 BPM, and go ahead and play along with me. Here we go. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this lesson, be sure to check out pianowithjohnny.com. We have over 1,000 step-by-step lessons for all playing levels where you'll learn your favorite songs, styles, and how to improvise at the piano. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.